And it's time for another late night or early morning. Starbase summary depends on your frame of reference. Kicking it off with a water deluge test. Deluge, sorry. I always get comments when I say it the way I say it down in South Texas, but you'll know what I mean. Look at all the water. It looks quite refreshing, but it also looks like it's adding to the humidity. This was uh, just after midnight, one of the nights there. Or was it the 7th the morning, early of the morning of the 8th for that deluge test, if you want me to say it fancy. <laughs> I do appreciate y'all commenting. I can take it. Moving right along, here's another reflecting pool shot from Mary as the two towers... I'm looking around for an eye on one of these towers, but I don't think it's supposed to be two eyes. I think one of them's supposed to be like white, and there's like a wizard dude on top. He's got this crystal ball. I, I think that's the wrong towers. Protective boxes moved from the production light to the launch site. Looks like they're putting it on a trailer or something. I'm going to assume that that's going to roll over. Let's see. That's the uh, rocket garden in the background. The old high bay. It's funny to call it the old high bay on the side here. Okay. How many people does it take to install a box? Well, see, there's two guys actually working and then everybody else is supervising. It feels like that in the field here at NASA Space Flight sometimes when we're getting ready for <laughs> a launch. Hey, it's been a long day. I mean, those almost look like, I don't think they're caissons, you know, like keep the soil aside. You must be putting them in to protect something in case everything blows up. This is an interesting shot. Okay, are we going to zoom out some? Like, where is this person? They're on a little tower. They got a little tri-tower segment. There's some antenna stuff. All right, crawling down. We see a little bit more structure there at the bottom. Where exactly is this person working? Well, I was hoping we'd zoom out a little bit more. It was the very top of the tower. <laughs> uh, the first tower, if I'm not mistaken, on that one. But we didn't see the zoomed out view. Maybe we'll see another zoomed out view and look for the top of the tower where that little mast is. Oh, well, it's up there. You can see it. It's at the very tippity top of the ship. The pointy bit up there at the very top is where that little mast is, where that person was climbing, doing work. Whew, good times. Then we get into a Ship 30 D stack here. Undoing the full stack. Taking it down from the top there, you can see the separation. Gratuitous Raptor engine shots here. Three sea level Raptors in the middle, three vacuum Raptors on the outside there. It's those sea level Raptors in the middle that are able to uh, gimbal or thrust vector and help steer the rocket. The vacuum raptors on the outside, the ones with the white bells that you sort of see here, those are so huge because they have a bigger nozzle to make them more effective in space where you have no atmosphere helping your exhaust sort of go backwards and therefore pushing your rocket forwards, right? You need more engine bell, you need more nozzle to help keep the exhaust going in the right direction so you can pull some more energy out of it. You don't want it to go sideways. You want it to go away from your rocket. Then, you know, Equal opposite reaction. Your rocket goes forward because the other goes backwards. Y you know how it works. It's not, well, I guess it is rocket science. Apparently, we've got a real time descend. Ah, and then we speed it up to 10x speed. I do like it when we put that up there. It's really hard to do every single time because sometimes when it's like clouds boiling and stuff like that, it's more of an, an art shot, right? Than uh, an engineering shot. We always want to have both of those types of shots in these. Some people love the arts and the views and stuff like that. Some people like the engineering. They're going to pause and count tiles and exactly figure out how this little pancake plate works and all these different things. We we'll always try a mix of those different types of shots. Apparently, we're just doing the entire ship here. We've sped it up to 10x speed, and Jack kept this camera locked in as the cables, actually the single cable that goes up and down a lot, thank you, YouTube comments, go twang, wang, 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 wang in the back there. See, like here, this is more of an art shot. It's like, I'm, I'm sort of interested in how fast that was, but that was way faster than 10x speed. But the clouds going in the background, eh, you know. Another one from Mary here at a different angle. They were out in force. Jack and Mary, everybody was stacked up waiting to catch this because there were 
expectation was that this was the last D stack so they could handle the FTS so that they could put it back together and launch this thing no earlier than this Sunday. But here you see some raceway being taken off. Now you can sort of see inside the raceway. There. The r raceway is just like a protective cover for cables. Um, cables, hoses, lines, that sort of stuff. And you don't just want like little messy lines there on the outside of your rocket. Not only does it not look great, like you haven't cleaned your room before you think you're going to launch to Mars, uh, <laughs> it's it just helps protect all the wiring and stuff. There is... Looks like we're hopping on a laptop or a tablet, maybe. Maybe we need to check what work we're supposed to be doing here. Work on OLM delivery continues. <laughs> more and more parts for that second OLM coming in. There we see the hinge pins. Like, when you see these in person, it's really obvious. I say obvious. They really do look like huge places that hinges and pins could go through to allow parts to, to rotate and maybe move in to hold the booster or what have you. What are those, are those boards on top, like, so that it doesn't catch on a, a power line? Somebody in the comment needs to help me out with that. It really looks like they put skis on top of that thing, upside down, so that it doesn't, I guess, catch on anything. I'm not sure what else that would be for. Y'all will tell me, though. Once again, notice the lack of sharp corners. The big circle, smooth uh, angle, or smooth angles. That's not really a thing. <laughs> now we're taking something apart at Massey's. Let's talk more about smooth corners on steel. <laughs> Looks like Jack ran over here, and we've got the test rig. Sort of the work platforms there. You can put the, the test tank or test article there in the middle of it, and they've taken it out. Next day, back over to ship 30 again. This is Max. You see Max's name there in the lower right-hand corner. Max Evans has made his way out here to Starbase. In preparation, I, you know, two things. Actually, the hurricane was going through, so why not evacuate? And I might as well keep evacuating until we get to Starbase, since a launch might happen. You sort of have a yellow shirt for scale on the chopsticks there. If you've seen the new video where we analyzed the accuracy of Falcon 9 landings and then sort of overlaid the chopstick size when they're open in the catch position over a drone ship, and then here's how many percent of the Falcon 9s land in this circle, and then can the booster, super heavy booster, do the same thing? I've got an entire video on that we just released today. Uh, maybe here at the end you'll see another suggested video pop up. And if you want to see how accurate Falcon 9 landings are. And whether or not Booster 12 here maybe can uh, learn something about Falcon 9 landings and whether or not they'll be able to get this booster in between the chopsticks. Like, what are the chances if they go for it and their GNC is similar that they can get a rocket body inside the size of the chopsticks, right? Got the SpaceX sign. The crane in there is sort of making the SpaceX sign look a little bit off. This is a good photo op. You see a lot of people coming down there taking pictures in front of that SpaceX sign on the other side of the road here. Okay, this is Booster FTS. They've opened up the flight termination system. If you're, if you're not aware of what FTS is, it's the flight termination system, which is, I mean, as described, supposed to terminate the flight. <laughs> like, you have a rocket, and if your rocket starts to go off course or out of control... They can literally blow these charges and it cuts holes in the rocket. It makes it lose, supposedly, it makes it lose structural integrity and fall apart so you don't have a rocket coming back towards South Padre Island where everybody is watching from. You have a rain of debris out in the safety area that's been cleared in the Gulf. We've seen it happen before on previous flights. We hope we don't see it on this upcoming flight. But all the rockets that launch have that sort of system on it as a safety feature in case they start to go out of control. I'd, I'd like to say there's like a big red button somebody can push and <laughs> the rocket's not a rocket anymore, but it's, it's not necessarily a button. There's actually automated flight termination systems. And if the rocket deviates too much, then it's like, nope, you're done. Stop. So this is cool. I've been driving back and forth this fourth because I'm out here, remember, is sort of working on preparing for the flight, getting our cameras and stuff ready. And they've been putting in this mural on the side of the parking garage. Ah, 
these pilings, those pilings are no normally covered by sand, and they're exposed right now because the storms that came through washed so much sand away from the beach that now you can see these pilings. And these pilings down here, you normally never see these, but these are actually part of an old uh, beach resort from the 1930s, the Del Mar Beach Resort. If you look that up, there's lots of information on it. But went away when World War II started. That's another story. <laughs> Let's watch the chopsticks practice catching things for a second. A little intermittent reflecting pool here on the opposite side. The, the, the ocean is behind you there. The gulf is behind you. And you're sort of looking with the waves at your back. We're going to scoot chip 30 over in between the chopsticks so that it can be engaged and lifted up and re-stacked. I, I needed to put those waves in slow motion so I could tell you all more about the beach resort. It's a really interesting story. We could do an entire video on the Del Mar Beach Resort. Chopsticks sort of doing their thing. This is Tower 2. I mean, it says right there on the little overlay thing. And they've, they've unfurled this flag. And I really wonder, are they going to have the flag flying when the launch takes off from Tower 1? Is that a thing? Oh, there's the moon. Is that the moon? Or is my screen dirty? I don't know. Y'all tell me if that's the moon or the screen. <laughs> so I wonder if that flag will be left going. And here they're putting more pieces on the mural. It looks like a fabric sort of thing that they're stretching across it in these strips. See, but we've been watching for them to do this. We didn't know are they going to peel it off, are they going to paint it on, or how are they going to do it? And it's, it's almost like a, like a printed banner they're attaching here. Here, of course, you can see uh, starships ostensibly landed on Mars. Over on the left-hand side, there's a domed city on Mars, a self-sustaining colony to spread and protect the light of humanity throughout the solar system, or at least a little bit further than this rock. A little sped up there, disco party, it's, it's, it's on Tower 1. <laughs> and that's going to be it for the Starbase Summary. Massive thanks to everybody who is out here catching it. Jack and Mary, Max is out here, D's out here. I even had a clip in there this time. The Starbase Live Ops. Thanks, Thomas, for editing it. But for now, we'll catch you all next time. Hey, we are rapidly approaching a potential launch on Sunday. Thanks for watching, y'all.